Hi and welcome to Lead Well, the podcast for you if you want to get better at leading yourself and leading others. This is Christine Schickinger, your host looking into how you can achieve peak performance while keeping a peaceful mind. In an earlier episode, we talked about the importance of the autonomic nervous system uh, for our health. And I also talked about how activating the parasympathetic nervous system was so important. That nervous system that is always related to rest and digest, but I really think it should be called thrive and survive. So what I want to do today is look into how do we use neurographica, positive intelligence and the trust technique to actually activate the parasympathetic nervous system? So what do they have in common and what is different? Because those are the three methodologies that I usually use when I'm working with my clients. And yes, I do have other methodologies as well, but those are really my three main ones. And so I wanted to share with you some more details about them. In Neurographica, as you probably know, we are using pen and paper to work on our thoughts, to work on our issues, to work on our future. And we do that by using very specific lines. So in Neurographica, we have what we call the Neurographica line or the Piskaryov line because it had been invented or found or developed by Professor Pavel Piskaryov, the author of Neurographica. This Piskaryov line is a line that you will see everywhere in nature because it's a line that is not straight. It's a line that is not repetitive, that's not repeating itself in any of its uh, parts. And it's also defined by going into a direction where we don't expect it to go. So think about a really wiggly line. I usually say it's like a toddler walking on a small path and being distracted by things on the right, on the left, and then on the right again. So a toddler cannot go in a straight line. They would always move from one side to the other in a very unpredictable way. And that is what a neurographica line looks like. We're also using circles because circles really represent the most harmonious shape that we have. So that's an archetype for harmony. Wherever you go, every person, every human being would recognize a circle as being a representation of harmony. And we use that, we leverage that. So we use the lines, we use circles, and we even round off crossings and corners that would appear on the paper because lines are crossing each other. So that at the end of a Neurographica drawing, when you look at it, there are no more corners. There are no more visible crossings. This gives us the ultimate impression of harmony. On the other hand, this drawing process of harmonizing, this drawing process of rounding off, of drawing circles is also activating this parasympathetic nervous system. So it relaxes us and it makes us become calm and quiet. In positive intelligence, on the other hand, we are using something that is called the PQ reps. And I think I mentioned them before. So PQ reps are small exercises, like one, two, maybe three to five minute exercises where you focus very closely on one of your senses. And by doing that, your brain is, it's almost like it's switching off your thinking. So you stop thinking, you focus on your senses. It's almost like you can watch your brain slow down and calm down. In positive intelligence, we're doing that to activate what we call a sage mode. And we will definitely talk about these different elements of positive intelligence in a later episode. But let me tell you that the sage mode is the state where you as a person can think clearly 
and make decisions from a position of authenticity, relaxation and an open mind. Rather than being stressed out, rather than making a decision in a state where you would rather run away or defend yourself, as we said, um, so with an active sympathetic nervous system, you can act and react from this place of authenticity. So in positive intelligence, again, we're doing these little PQ reps and the little exercises that I've provided you with at the end of all the previous episodes are exactly that PQ rep. Now, why are we calling it the PQ rep? It's very easy because when you go to the gym and you want to train your muscles, you do reps and you make sure that by doing them, your muscle gets stronger and stronger. And with PQ reps, we do exactly the same just for our mental muscle, the one that will then help you to quickly activate your parasympathetic nervous system so that you can act in the way that you would like, act in the way that you can decide yourself. Now, the third method that I'm using frequently is the trust technique. And yes, the trust technique has been designed and is used for working with people and their animals. And in the trust technique, we also have a fantastic way of activating the parasympathetic nervous system. By the way, it's activated not only in the people that we work with, but also the animals because we share feelings. So it's almost like our feelings are contagious. If we as a person can put ourselves into the state of inner calmness, inner peace, it's almost like we create an area of peace around us, an area of stillness around us that our animals then join and they really love that. So to do that, to put ourselves in this state, in the trust technique, we do something that we call creative reaction. And it's a process. Creative reaction is a combination of two different things or two different states. The first one is getting present. So the first one is getting into a non-thinking state. You are 100% yourself where you are authentic, where, uh, where you are in the here and now. And it might sound familiar or it might sound similar to what you just heard. And yes, it is similar to the PQ reps. It is similar to positive intelligence. That's why I love those two so much because they are such a great fit. In the trust technique, there is one additional thing that we're doing, and that's what we call mindful regard. When we work with animals and we put ourselves in this relaxed state, in this present state, sometimes our animals cannot take that because they have a thought coming up, they have a memory coming up, and they need to express that. And what we do there is we let them express it. It's exactly the same as we said, I think it was last time, about writing up your thoughts. That's exactly it. I mean, your animal cannot write up their thoughts, but you can listen to them. You can watch them, observe them, see what's coming out fr from them. This is what we do in this phase of creative reaction. And again, this is to activate the parasympathetic nervous system. And if the animal has an issue coming up, so is activating the sympathetic nervous system, we stay calm, but not too calm, but calm enough so that they can express themselves and we are not adding to their unpeace, to their distress in this particular moment. I would call everything that happens in these three methods a relaxed awareness because we are relaxed, but we're not asleep. We are fully aware of what's going on. And that's exactly what we can do when we are in this parasympathetic nervous state. We are fully awake and we are aware of our surroundings. We can then respond to it from a place of inner calmness, inner stillness, and a fully authentic place. There is one more thing that I want to share with you. That is something that I just recently 
thought about because in the trust technique, we are working a lot with traumatized animals. And in positive intelligence, we also work a lot with how to respond to unfortunate events. Of course, it gets easier and easier the more you practice and the more you train your mental muscle to get into this sage mode. With the animals, what we do, as, as I said, we mindfully regard them. So we listen to them. But when I think about it, in both the positive intelligence and also the trust technique, the trauma is surfaced and then we allow it to exit the body. We allow it to go. So it's a passive action. What we can do with Neurographica, and that's why I think this technique or this method is really unique. In Neurographica, we also have an approach to handle previous conflict or trauma. And we're doing that with something that is called the number one algorithm, which doesn't tell you a lot. But this is also called releasing constraints. What happens there is we have a specific algorithm, eight steps that we follow to walk through this unpleasant memory, this unpleasant thought. And we do that by an outburst first. So we take a pen and we, we scribble on the paper and it might be so hard that the paper is even destroyed by it. But then what we have on the page there, that's really the representation of the conflict. That's the representation of the trauma. And the wonderful thing in Neurographica, we then are harmonizing what's on the page. So we are taking out all the corners, all those crossings, all those little things that are really hurting us. Even when we look at the drawing, it's hurting our eyes to see all those corners. And we are replacing it or we are, we are transforming it into roundings. We are transforming it into smooth lines, into circles, so that we have actually transformed the previously conflict-laden thought. So the previous conflict is no longer visible on the page. And it's not only gone, but we have actively transformed it into something positive. And I think this is really unique. That's why I wanted to share that with you, because should you have any thought, anything in your life that is not the way you would like it to be at the moment, Neurographica might be the solution for you. It makes me think of this story of the two wolves living inside you where an old man was talking to his grandson and said, you have two wolves living inside you. One wolf is the bad wolf and one wolf is the good wolf. So which one is the one that will win at the end? The answer is really simple. It's the one that you're feeding. So if you feed your good wolf enough, then the bad wolf is just not strong enough to win. However, the bad wolf is still there. And what I notice with Neurographica, what we can do is we turn the bad wolf into a good wolf. And it's so amazing. And I know Neurographica is very powerful, but I think this really was an eye opener for me because I think this is something that I have not seen in any of the other methods that I have come across. I would love to hear your thoughts about this because this is my philosophical episode. So let me know what you think about it and your experience with any other way of activating your parasympathetic nervous system and also any other way of releasing stress, releasing trauma, releasing conflicting thoughts. Now to round this off, let's do one more little exercise. This time what I invite you to do is to do a little Neurographica exercise. How about you take a pen and a piece of paper and start drawing circles very mindfully, maybe a bit slower than you would usually do it. And while you draw your circles, pay attention to the direction you draw them in. Are you drawing them clockwise 
or counterclockwise? And how often are you going around if you're drawing a circle? Are you just starting once and then finishing off at that exact point? Or are you going around several times with your pen? Then pay attention to the size of your circles. Are they rather small or rather big? And change that as well. So if you started off drawing small circles, make some really big ones. So big that they might not even fit on the page. And then look at your circles. Are you drawing them nicely one next to the other? Or are they overlapping? And again, try out what happens if they overlap. You find such an exercise on my YouTube channel as well. And you see the results there. And your result can be totally different. Because everyone has a different personality. And these circles, it's so interesting when you start looking at the different circles that are coming up for the different people. That alone already tells us a lot about what's going on in their mind and their life. So I hope you enjoyed today's session. And as always, may you lead well, yourself and others. This was Lead Well. Now, what is the one thing that you're taking away from this episode? Please share in the comments below and do share the podcast with your friends and family. But only if you like it.